Hey, what's up guys, Auto Fanatics. So today we're gonna be putting a Kurt Hitch on my Alfa Romeo Stelvio because I need to put my bike rack out there and I wanna start going mountain biking. So before you get started, I'm just gonna show you guys how I have it set up. I'm gonna show you the tools on the bench. And then of course, I highly recommend having a helper to do this because this hitch is pretty heavy. And if you try to do it on your own, it's gonna whack you in the face, you're gonna get hurt. So you can see here, I got the car raised on my jack point jack stands. And I also have a safety rubber parking curb, which is like a wheel chock up front. On the floor, I have some foam squares that I usually lay down whenever I work on the cars and I'm gonna be on my back. So I got foam squares and then I put down a moving blanket. So this is a Kurt Hitch. These are made in America. And I picked this up from a company called E-Trailer. So just a disclosure, I am not sponsored by Kurt or E-Trailer. I've been buying hitches for my bike rack from E-Trailer for about eight years and I highly recommend them. So I'll tell you more about that in the you know conclusion of the video. So you can see here, there's only three mounting points on the left and the right. You're gonna have to remove two panels underneath the rear fascia, do a little trimming, that's really easy. But I'm gonna show you the hardware and everything that comes in the kit right now on the bench. And this should take us about 20 to 30 minutes if everything goes as planned, but you know, never, no, nothing ever goes as planned. So let me show you guys what we got. These are the grade eight hardware bolts that you have to attach what they call these like fishing lines. So you screw these onto the end with one of these support brackets and you have to fish it through the unibody of the car. As it comes down, you have your helper, lightly thread the nuts on once you get into position and you torque it into place. So it's relatively simple. You can knock this out with basic hand tools. You don't need any kind of impact gun or torque wrench or anything like that. But I highly recommend you always do this with a helper. Now on some cars, hitches can be very light. This hitch is about 55 pounds and you don't want this thing hitting you in the head. It actually hit me earlier, and we were gonna do this over at the shop on the lift, and I decided to let's do it on the floor at home as a DIY, because I think a lot of you guys out there that watch my channel and my videos are the DIY type, and this would definitely be the best way to show you guys. So we're gonna get set up right now. Jerry's gonna help me out with this. And All these right along here, and this whole panel's gonna come down, and I gotta trim it back over here for the receiver. The Allen bolt, you see? There's an Allen bolt here. And there's an Allen bolt here. So they're not, they're not half size. Though. No, you know what it is, dude. It's like the hardware is mismatched. Okay, that's that. Okay. Taste different. Why don't they just use one side? Dude, and... you gotta work on a Bentley or a British car. It's all fucked up. So that's the hidden bolt. But oh, watch your head. This thing drove me nuts. I remember when I did the exhaust, I'm like, where is that other piece of fastener? They really don't need that. One. No, this is totally. This is totally an Italian boo boo, I guess. <laughs> they're like yeah we're just gonna throw it in there just in case they decide to put an exhaust or a hitch it's gonna drive them crazy and it's funny the uh the insulation for the hitch does not even mention this bolt and also the uh the four millimeter hex that we okay got that out okay so let's get that to the side so if you look up here these are actually closeouts so we have to open them up so these are the mounting points for the hitch here and here and there's supposed to be a third one. Where is the third one? I have no idea. Where would the third hole go? You only, yeah, you only got two bolts on, on no, each side, though. There's three on each side. Oh, oh. Is, it, is it covered? Hold on. Yeah, it's covered. I see. You see this? Yeah. So just to pay attention, so that they close this out, which is actually smart for corrosion protection to close these holes out so you don't rot out your frames, unlike American cars that rot out after a year. So we're just gonna peel this back. You can see these little stickies right there. And considering everything's new, it's gonna come off nice and easy. You're just you're gonna end up discarding it. This is the tricky one because you can't even see this right here. Yeah, it's in the middle of the exhaust. Yeah, it's like, we're trying to, get in there you can see it on camera but you can't you see can it. yeah there's like a piece of tape look there it goes see it so here's the holes the three holes you got the first one by the exhaust hanger which is right here you got one round hole and two square elongated holes and these are going to be the, the three mounting points where we're going to snake the hardware through and we got to sneak it through on the side there's a hole in the side and we're gonna fish the hardware through this hole into all three locations and then we're gonna line it up and get it secured so all right just a little tip on the driver's side here this is a drain hose so what you're gonna want to do it's got little teeth you're gonna push it through 
and you're gonna make sure that when you reinstall this panel, you first insert that hose. You can see it right there, there's the provision for it. And that's that in a matter of seconds. So that's it. We're just gonna get this off and then we're gonna show you the uh, the sequence of fishing the hardware through. And now we gotta go and get the hidden 10 millimeter bolt. Right, so we tried to do a test fit and we cannot get the hitch test fit around the exhaust. So obviously we're gonna have to drop this down. So I'm using a 13 millimeter, three inch drive. And I'm just gonna undo the hanger here. And we're gonna try to pull this down. See if we get a little bit more room. Well, we got a lot more room now because of the tight tolerance. And also, this car has the custom centerline exhaust. And I hope to God that we don't have to get the plasma cutter out. But that'll be fun anyway. I'll show you guys the plasma cutter. All right, so what do you think? Mm, Much try. better. All right, let's okay, try it now. This wasn't fitting with the custom exhaust. And there's definitely a difference between this opening here that goes around the pipes and this opening here. So I just marked it here. I'm going to be trimming back the quarter inch pleat steel. It's definitely not gonna be a structural issue. Safely secured in the jaw horse. You guys watch my channel. This thing is indispensable for fabricators. I use this thing every week to do everything. So you can see it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna use my 3M cutoff wheel with my pneumatic cutoff wheel right now. We're gonna get that cut. Let's uh, wear safety goggles. I gotta buy safety goggles that aren't worn out and damaged from sparks. <laughs> so, ready? Yep. What the fuck? You okay? Oh god. Went straight up. You're throwing the sparks right into my face. I need to go the yeah. Any better? Huh? Any better? No. So this is the entire section that had to be cut out and clearanced to fit with the larger three inch exhaust that's on the car. So you can see I used the cutoff wheel, just cleaned it up with the Dyna braid, and now we're gonna go back to the car and we're gonna test fit it. All right, so this is the hardware. So Jerry's gonna go and show you guys. This is what it looks like when you're done. You see? So you, you thread on. You have the square plate, you have the bolt, uh, the carriage bolt, and you screw, you have this, uh, that's this the little... fish that's screwed onto the end of this little wire. Shove it up in the hole. Watch this thing doesn't hit you in the face and snake that on. Snake this on. Get it up in the hole. And then you can pull the bolt straight through. Turn it up. Bingo. And you're done. And I guess you leave these until you thread them onto the Yeah, uh, so we got those two. And now the tricky one is gonna be the next one. You see this hole? To grab one bolt. <laughs> Curse the exhaust. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing now? So let's get this thing out of the way a little bit here. Yeah, I can get that. <laughs> well, let's, let's try to see if we can get it up. All right, yeah, let's see if, I'll keep the nut in my hand. Tell me when you're ready, go well, nice and easy. How are you lining? Uh, we're not too bad. Okay, we're, we're getting there, hold on. Okay. okay. I'm lined up there. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. The, the troubled one is, is uh, the one in the back. So what should I do? Should I try to get the nut on with the wire? 
No, no, you're gonna have to take the wire off. It, there. Okay, so let's oh, get. That just got me in the eye. You okay? Yeah, I'm alright. Alright, so I got all three of them through, but we're gonna have to do this. We're gonna have to do one side at a time. I am pretty much lined up here. Alright, I'm gonna get this one off. You notice you gotta watch that the tail of this wire doesn't hit you in the face. Yep, you gotta go real slow. Okay, so look, I got this nut. That's on. Okay? Now I don't have to hold it anymore. I can just undo this. Okay, so I have the middle nut off. So once you get one, I think you're good. Yeah, once it's held in place, and you stop this thing from whipping And the, the carriage mouth. bolts keep them from spinning. I would hand tighten the, the, that one as best you can. Yeah, this one I'm having a hard time with. And you know, pull the wire back through the exhaust like this. Oh, so you just... want it to get straight. I almost took my teeth out. <laughs> so if anyone's watching this video and you want a nice exhaust, this one's gonna be for sale. <laughs> All right, so I got these finger tight. So we're just marking the uh, the plastic panel, and I'm actually gonna do this a little different so we could kind of retain this mounting point. So we're just gonna mark it all the way through. So you think, Jerry, like cut it, like radius it, like right here, right? Yeah, see if you can see it. I mean, if you, if you have to cut it off, I have to cut it off, but yeah, try to see if you can see so it. So this is the section we're gonna be cutting. So according to their instructions, they want you to cut an 11 inch piece, five inches over, but we're gonna go from this point over and we're trying to make it look a little bit better. You know, why, why do I wanna get covered in shard right now? After what I just went through. So it cuts, it cuts relatively easy. These are my new uh, little shears I got. Aren't they great? What are those? So, uh, the the Facom shears. The reason I bought them is specifically for this. Because you can't get the big shears in some spots. Look at this. It cuts, it cuts beautiful. I mean, you can use a Dremel or whatever, but I don't think it's needed. So there's the section that's been cut off. All right, let's do a test fit. Which, this is, uh, Jerry, which side is this? This is the passenger side, right? That's the driver's. This is the driver's side. Yeah. Well, it came out pretty good. And don't forget your little drain holes. Yeah, absolutely, got the two drain holes here. All right, guys, so there's the hitch, all mounted, including all the fabrication and the headaches. You can see the panels that we had to trim back and cut to go around the hitch. So it also is gonna give access to the exhaust system when I do change the exhaust system out, which will probably be soon. And uh, I will show you guys now the one-up bicycle hitch with the bicycle mounted on the Stelvio when I drop it down. All right, guys, so this is the final installation of the Kurt hitch on the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. This was an absolute nightmare. Like I said, I wasn't even gonna shoot this video or post this video, but I actually think it was good that I did it and I show you guys, if you have a custom exhaust or anything in your car that's modified, or if the manufacturer that makes the hitch didn't do a great job designing it, you're gonna have to cut, grind, and figure out how to do it. But uh, you can see it there, that's my One Up USA. I did a video on this about a year and a half ago. I feel this is the best bike rack you're gonna get, made in America, all billet aluminum. So just to show you here, so on the other cars that I had this bike rack on, they were regular passenger cars, so they had the inch and a quarter receiver. Well, on the SUV, this is a two inch, and I had to use the adapter. You see that right there? It gives you an, a billet aluminum adapter to adapt the one up to the two inch receiver. Uh, the hitch looks really good. I'm gonna remove the decals on the bottom just because I don't like the way decals look uh, when you're driving behind the car. But just to show you there, uh, it's pretty you know low profile. It's not in your face. It doesn't look stupid or ugly. But let me tell you, this was an absolute nightmare to install as you guys see the video. I wasn't gonna post this video, but I think the trailer hitch install from hell, it actually was pretty funny to do it. And uh, thanks for Jerry for coming over and bearing with me for a few hours while we Got the plasma cutter, the grinders, and went crazy pulling our hair, trying to get this thing fitted to the car. Because of course, my car's got a custom three inch exhaust. <laughs> so hope you guys liked the video, got some tips. Uh, if any of you guys run into this stuff, doing it yourself, you'll know exactly what you're gonna need, but uh, take your time, be patient. Also, I do not recommend anybody doing an SUV hitch alone. The thing is heavy, you gotta be very careful. You don't wanna have the thing knock you in the face if it's on the ground, so always, 
wear eye protection, and always have a helper. So thanks for watching this uh, new video. Stay tuned to the Auto Fanatic channel for more content, and please subscribe to the channel and head over to the Auto Fanatic website to support Auto Fanatic as a brand. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video real soon. Also, for all the Alfa Romeo guys that are interested in the Stelvio, it's been one year since ownership. I am gonna be doing a one-year ownership review video just like I did with my Julia Quadrifoglio, most likely in about a week or so. So subscribe to the channel, set your notifications, and stay tuned to that video, and I'll tell you all about the ownership experience of the new Stelvio TI Sport that we've had for the past 12 months, driving it daily in New York through all seasons. So once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video real soon. Take care. Chaos. Chaos.